Hello and welcome to this new season of Midtown Concerts. Uh, thank you for tuning in and joining us here in the ether today. My name is Peter Walker, this is Krista Patton, and we are playing a set of French Baroque music, mostly pastoral style music, uh, focusing on the repertoire for the musette. Now part of the fun of this new way of doing things, where we're all recording and submitting it online and things is that we get to play in lovely spaces like this. Uh, Krista has been kind enough to host us and I'll let her tell you about the space. I couldn't be happier to wake up in the morning and walk into my living room and play a concert for you all. Uh, this is um, this is my house, this is my living room. It was once um, inhabited by the famous composer John Cage. Uh, so we have a little bit of early and a little bit of modern, and um, it is kind of like a little hermitage up in the woods, just, just as the musette was played in Marie Antoinette's Hermitage uh, on the, the grounds of Versailles, where they made believe they were simple and poor and shepherds. <laughs> Uh, we really are poor here and simple, but uh, we're having a great time, as usual, playing music in uh, a space that was, um, was always a space for music and musical thought. And in honor of John Cage, the musette is currently over on the table playing its own version of 433 all by itself. <laughs> so we're going to get back to the music and we'll be back later in the concert to tell you a little bit about the instruments.
So the musette is a bagpipe, but probably not the sort of bagpipe you would expect if you just thought of the word bagpipe, right? You think of the Highland bagpipe, the magnificent Scottish instrument that you've got to wear a kilt to play and everyone can hear you from miles off. The musette is quite different than that. So um, as Krista mentioned earlier, this is music that was popular in the French Baroque when everyone wanted to pretend to be shepherds. And shepherds, as you'll know if you look at any medieval depiction of the nativity, play the bagpipes. So naturally, the French Baroque people who were pretending to be shepherds wanted bagpipes, but the bagpipes played by the actual shepherds were rather loud and harmonically limited, and worst of all, you had to blow into them, which meant you would distort your face and you wouldn't look nearly so pretty. Um, so they came up with this. To start with, I've got this bellows, which straps around my waist and loops around my arm so that I can inflate the bagpipe without blowing it. And then to solve the harmonic issue, we've got a whole bunch of little brass keys on the chanter here. In fact, we've got two chanters. We've got the Grand Chalamot here, which is fairly similar to a normal bagpipe chanter, but with uh, six keys on it. And then this is the Petit Chalamot, and we've got six more keys on that, which gives you an extended uh, upward range. And the other thing about bagpipes is they can be kind of clumsy. If you want a low drone sound, you need a big, long drone. Or do you? So this is a, a, a shuttle drone, it's called. Um, there's lots and lots of bores that go back and forth in this and are connected in all sorts of clever ways um, so that you can tune them with these sliders on the outside called layette. And uh, this allows you to pack three or four drones into this very small, uh, discreet little package. And of course, you need a highly decorated bag to put this all on.
and I'm going to be playing a variety of instruments on this concert, some winds and some strings. Um, the flute and the recorder, of course, are great friends of the musette and the uh, musette duets, although written for two musettes, are equally as enjoyable with a musette and another wind of some kind. Um, I'm also going to be playing uh, this instrument here, which is uh, a replica of a 17th century harp, um, which would have been in use probably up through the beginning of the 1700s, which is around the time of, of our repertoire. Um, and I wanted to show you a little bit how it works. It's uh, it's a, um, a solution to many centuries of the chromatic question with the harp. The harp usually is seen with just one row of strings, and if you want uh, more notes than just the diatonic notes on the instrument, um, aka the white, or the white keys of the piano, uh, you would have to tune them in. Um, in the 17th century, they decided to just add them on to the soundboard. So here, you can see there are three rows of pegs because there are three rows of strings, and you can see the you can see how they go into the soundboard with these little buttons that hold them in. You have this outer these outer rows, and they're in unison. <laughs> And then the middle uh, set of pegs uh, shows you where the middle row is, which holds all of the flats and sharps. So C sharp, B flat, F sharp, G sharp, B flat. And they sound a little out of tune because they're in a, tuned into a temperament where you can have both a G sharp and an A flat. So um, it has extra black keys, shall we say. E flat and D sharp. Um, so this is this is a, a very rare instrument in these parts, but it goes very nicely with the musette, and they very well could have known each other. If we were doing later repertoire uh, of the musette, um, we might be playing the first early pedal harps uh, with them. So this is right on the cusp of of the beginnings of the modern pedal harp. Um, and finally, I will be playing this cute little four-string guitar, which um, Peter tells me. What does Peter tell me? That Louis XIV could only do two things, dance and play the guitar. So, in honor of that, I will be playing a little guitar on the last piece. Enjoy!